Good afternoon. So let's talk about the saffron mirage. So there are golden horizons. That's what every patient wants. Real visual clarity without glasses. The dancing heat. That's what the surgeon feels. And a taste completely out of reach. That is distant, intermediate, near, without halos and glare, without loss of contrast. Until the out of reach part isn't. So this patient's name is Mr. Emron Samuel. I've taken permission to present his case. His age is 57. He's a businessman. He runs a chain of schools, uh, wants to watch television, drive, drive at night. Uh, he has a driver, but he says, when I travel abroad, I love driving. So I wouldn't want that to be taken away. He works a lot on his computer and he wants to be able to see his mobile without glasses. He's a tall man. Uh, he's got a good arm length. Uh, which is a little taller compared to the other Indians. He wishes to become less dependent on his glasses, as do all. He's not a diabetic, not a hypertensive. So his vision, he came with 6-9 part in both the eyes. And in the left eye, he had a plus 1.25 and near add was 2.25. Now, if I use an EDOF here, he won't be able to read near. He's a very particular person. He would not like any waxy vision or no loss of contrast that accompanies generally EDOFs which have spherical aberrations. He surely doesn't want halos and glares. He's read about it on the internet and he knows about it and he doesn't want to use a trifocal. So this was his pupillary size. Uh, very average, normal, photopic, mesopic. The dominant eye, it was coming 18 diopter with minus 0.52 and 19.5 with 0.38. This was on another optical biometer, similar results. I like going in with the first minus. In my hands, the first minus comes good. So this was the topography, it was a clean eye. If you see in the right eye, there is not much cylinder. In the left eye, there is a cylinder which will be corrected with an arc with the femto. OCT is normal, not too much dryness. So after the lens is injected in the bag, it takes another 30 odd seconds. This is the leading haptic, which you have to enclavate. Just lift it up and put it over the capsule. And uh, the trailing haptic. Now we have the two small flanges. So if I've entered from the right side port, I like to do whatever enclavation 90 degrees away from there, that makes it very simple. And this is enclavating both the smaller flanges. So this hardly takes 30 seconds extra over and above your surgical time. The results, um, the right eye with the 18 diopter femtis, uh, this is from his Indo paper. He accepted plus one for near. And in the left eye, he was plano with 6-6 six, six part uh, and N6 and together binocularly he was doing just fine. So basically he did not require that plus one reading in the right eye. He was very happy. I did offer it to him. He said, I don't want any number. I'm very happy how it is. Maybe three months down the line when he comes for a follow-up visit, I will ask him once again. He has absolutely no halos and glare. He's extremely happy and he's more happy because he got the money from the Mediclaim. So uh, he just texted me and uh, thrilled about that. So again, using the combination of uh, comfort and an M plus, um, when we put an M plus in the non-dominant eye, the chances of angel wing halos goes down. Of course, because he was a patient who was going to be using the computer a lot, I went ahead with the uh, MF15 if it is a woman who's at home going to be on her mobile, I would go with uh, the M plus in both the eyes, Femtis. So as the talk says, I like to customize each patient based on their needs. If the patient is a little budget conscious, I may do a micro monovision with the Femtis M plus, uh, the MF15. So that's it. Thank you, wonderful. Thank you. I think uh, you once again highlighted the uh, various options for individual patients. So yes. this is one more example. But now the time is for the question. Uh, Dr. Nagana, you have a very ex excellent uh, presentation. I think it is Femtis 
M plus I O L. Yes. Uh, what I saw is you know I, is uh, you had implanted the flange and fixed it with the capsule axis, yes. and then you rotated about more than 20 degrees. Yes. No problem. Uh, will it not transfer the stress or the zonial because it, the, it is fixed with the capsular bag and then yeah. you are rotating? It doesn't. It is not as free. As, uh, otherwise, is it possible to put the lens in a right position and do the fixation of the flange very, without rotation? Very nice question. One can do that, but then you have to be jawed. Metta or Sri Ganesh because when you're trying to do it at the opposite side it can slip with the regular Sinski so I have designed another instrument which is J shaped when you want to do that you can use that instrument and then easily enclave it in its final position yeah, one more question is can it do, be done better with the bimanual method two instruments one will it's not really required. Not it, required. it rotates okay. quite easily. Okay. And the best part is once it's rotated, the femtis, there is no vertical tilt, there is no horizontal tilt, there is absolutely no rotational tilt uh, rotation. Yes. So it's it's really, okay. really good. In manual capsular rexis, the capsule indexes cannot be made on the visual axis. With the femto, we have a choice with the press of a button, either to make it in the center of the pupil or to make it on the visual axis. When we press the button on the visual axis, the rexis actually moves to the center of the visual axis by that angle alpha or angle kappa. We can see the position changing a little nasally, maybe a little inferiorly. Now, when you fix the femtis on the capsular bag, on the rexis, it is perfectly centered. The ELPO or the effective lens positioning is so good that the outcome becomes very predictable. Yeah. And also over time, the refraction doesn't change. So only a femtis lens, which has to be enclavated, can be fitted on the visual axis and this gives the best sharpness and quality of vision. Repeated biometry, doing it on two different machines if you have access, finding your own personal A constant. For some, it may be emetropia, for some, it may be the first myopic reading, for some, it may be the first hyperopic reading. Customize it to the surgeon.